here I am in my office. Just got this new Oath of the Gate Watch Game Day Championship playmat here. You know, it's fun to bust out at FNM and scare the newbies with. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? These bookshelves that I had to get installed to hold on my budget commander decks. Because, you know, it's like the professor at Tolarian Community College always says. By singles, not sealed product. It's about making smart investments. Investments in yourself. Investments in your knowledge. Because, you know, knowledge is power. Or, or but, but not like power and toughness power. Like, like, like power, like, like strength. Uh, anyway, the real reason I keep this playmat here is that it's a reminder. A reminder that dreams are still possible. You know, it wasn't that long ago I was digging through bulk boxes in comic shops. But then something happened to me. You know, I found, I found a mentor. And then I found another mentor. And a few mentors later, I had five mentors. Uh, and, you, you know, like, they weren't, they weren't all from, like, Guilds of Ravnica. Like, they, they, didn't, they didn't all have the, the keyword mentor. Um, but, you know, it's not all about the win percentage. You know, it's about the good life. It's about health, wealth, love, and happiness. So, that's why I recorded a... A little video, it's actually the one you're watching now, where I share a deck list. A deck list that's the culmination of all my knowledge, of all my experience. But well, but not but not like experience like the 2015 commander decks. Not not like not like experience counters. Uh, Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, everyone in betwixt and otherwise, I'm your host, The Kid in the Office, and tonight, I'm putting myself to the test. Recently, on social media, I saw an interesting post inquiring as to how one would go about getting a friend into ADH. Would you tell them to buy a precon? Would you let them borrow a deck? If so, which one would you let them pilot? This got me thinking, and after witnessing a couple of other people do something very similar, I decided to try my hand at constructing what I would consider to be a competent introductory list for those just learning the game. The idea being it would still have some amount of depth for those with a comprehensive understanding of mechanics and synergy. Fortunately, I had already experimented with the commander I elected in the past, and so most of this endeavor was simply updating a several-year-old stack, but I'm pretty content with where it ended up. Still, as they say, it's best to show and not tell, so let's get into it. God Eternal Oketra is a 5-mana 3-6 legendary white zombie god with double strike that reads, whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 4-4 black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance. When God Eternal Oketra dies, or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into its owner's library, third from the top. So, as I've already established, this is a list aimed at newer players, and as a result, its game plan is going to be extremely linear when compared to some of the other deck techs I've done in the past. In a sentence or so, the mission statement of this stack is to play particular creatures that return themselves or other permanents to your hand over and over and over again in an attempt to amass an army of brawny brain-hungry warriors. To keep things simple, I'm going to divide the cards we cover into two clear categories, enablers and payoffs, which we will elaborate on in that order. Therefore, let's lead things off with our enablers, as although they aren't flashy, they're the sparks necessary to ignite our fire. First off, we have the best of the best, the creatures that can bounce themselves back to hand. Those being Core Skyfisher, White Mane Lion, Stone Cloaker, and Emancipation Angel. Traditionally, 
One of the struggles Mono White has faced in the format is its lack of ability to draw cards. What I love about this list is the fact that as long as you find one of these four, you'll have all you need to get your game plan going. Rather than needing to run innumerable inefficient effects, or have an innate source of advantage already in the command zone, the strength of our god Eternal is its ability to synergize with specific spells. Even with only one card in hand, you can repeatedly rebuild in the face of removal just by casting it continually, as each time you do, you'll be netting a sizable swinger in the process. But unfortunately, only so many of these pieces have seen print, so we have to find something else to fill the rest of our 100 slots. In our case, a reasonable portion of that number is going to be dedicated to cards with similar yet critically unlike abilities. For instance, Aviary Mechanic and Shepherd of the Flock are both cheap creatures that bounce their constituents, but are incapable of targeting themselves. This means that, in conjunction with one another, they fill a similar role as the former, but alone, they simply allow us to recycle one of the many payoffs we'll be covering later, and of course trigger our general a couple of times to boot. Furthermore, Igonjo Freeriders and Cartographer's Hawk are the foil to Mechanic and Shepherd, as although alone they are consistent means of accumulating creature tokens, they have a limit on how many times they can do so per turn. As you can see, either you can replicate self-sufficiency or speed, but you'll be hard-pressed to do so simultaneously. Last in our list of enablers is a series of artifacts that reduce the cost of the creatures we cast. If you've seen my video on Reki, the history of Kamigawa, you'll be well acquainted with these cards, but for those of you who are new to the channel, they all do roughly the same thing, with varying degrees of specificity and upside. Considering our want to creature spam, Pearl Medallion, Cloud Key, and the flavorful Oketra's Monument all make our one-card enablers even more efficient, while also making it easier to storm off with the rest of our deck in the hopes of digging towards them. But by now, I've alluded to our second category a couple of times, and having gotten through the nitty-gritty, we can finally talk about the payoffs, or ways of accruing additional value out of the cards we've covered. First on the docket, are creatures with impactful enter the battlefield effects that can ultimately be reiterated whenever we use one of our imposter single slot engines. Spirited Companion draws us a card, Palace Jailer eliminates an enemy, Solemn Simulacrum pockets us a planes, Guardian of Faith protects our power, and Moon Blessed Cleric tutors a versatile suite of spells depending on the situation we see ourselves in. Additionally, there are variations on this basic format that, although a little more niche in nature, are often even more impactful. For instance, Elspeth Conquers Death isn't exactly a creature, but it's a removal, disruption, and recursion spell that sits around, waiting to be picked up and played again. The restoration of Eganjo is similarly a spectacular and versatile form of ramp with the added upside of becoming easier to bounce if you're willing to wait. Not that its creature half isn't synergistic as well. And Giant Killer is a playable Smite the Monstrous, especially when you realize it can be bought back with its kangaroo counterparts in a pinch. Still, the fun doesn't stop there. Aside from resources to replay, we run more reasons to do so in the first place. Song of the World Soul and Blessed Sanctuary two times our token output, and cosplay our commander. Bygone Bishop does something similar, though with artifacts that don't attack, and the combat-centric Gold Knight Commander and Binding Mummy set up our swings with a swell of stats and cast aside the color pie to knock down blockers respectively. So, how'd I do? It's combat-centric, simplistically synergistic, monocolored, and won't break the bank to boot, all which I thought were crucial boxes to tick as not to deter someone who doesn't possess a decade's worth of game knowledge. Let me know in the comments what generals you think would make a good first impression, and 
As always, if you're interested in checking out the decklist for yourself, you can do so in the description down below. Until next time, a big thank you to everyone at home watching, much love, and peace.